I am not suggesting that if I come to know myself, my habits will change. They have a lifetime of momentum and emotional force. They repeat. What can change in me is my relationship to this body of habits. This is called a shift in context. As I am now, I am identified, equals I am that, with my habits. I identify myself as my habits. They are who I am. Thus, I and the habits are one, the same. I am identified with patient, honest, steady, sincere self-observation, this identification can shift. I can begin to view the habit objectively. That is without identification. As a scientist views a bug under a microscope, this is struggle with habit, not against. Observation will show me what the struggle with and how to struggle. P.D. Ospensky cites the exception to struggling against habit as the struggle against expressing negative emotion. This does not create unexpected or undesirable consequences in search of miraculous New York Harcourt, 1946, 12. I can begin to study the mammal body and learn its habits because it is a creature of habit. It repeats. And I can begin to discern its patterns, intellectual, emotional, and physical. I can come to know myself. The body is a mammal instrument, a creature of habit. Thus, it is predictable. The doe follows the exact same path to the waterhole every day. The lion observes this and learns to wait on a low-lying limb for her to come down the path. In the same way, the inner observer can begin to predict the habitual behavior of the mammal instrument, the body, and be prepared for it. It learns the patterns. It knows itself. This is my only hope for becoming more conscious and not at the mercy of habit. If I see the habit often enough, say 10,000 times or more, then I can begin to predict where, when, and how it will manifest exactly as it has so many times before. And I may be prepared before it arises. I may be able to choose another course. Certainly, I may be able to view the habit more objectively. In this way, I can cease to be always a victim of my own habits. I can begin to find some stability within, some equilibrium, some moderation of tone, behavior, emotion, and thought. I can recover natural sanity and basic goodness. Self-observation is the tool by which this is possible. It is called the first tool by some, and by others, the human tool. It is the tool by which the human is able to operate, repair, and maintain the human body, tame and train its functions. Without it, I am a machine, an automation, a robot at the mercy of unconscious habitual mechanical forces, both internal and external. Self-observation is fundamental to the process of the soul's awakening from its unconscious dreaming. Thus, even an idiot can learn to operate the instrument, see human biological instrument, effectively and efficiently by learning to use the tool which comes with the instrument. To become efficient in the use of the tool requires practice. The practice is self-observation. I am a mechanic. I have learned some things about how to use the tool which comes with the instrument. I am no master.
but I am a good mechanic because I have developed attention to the instrument. We all know that a good mechanic, one who is honest, efficient, practical, and aware, can be of great service. This is an owner's manual written by a mechanic. In the beginning, it is good and responsible to note this important word of caution. What is being discussed here is not a way of faith. It is a way of self-study, of self-knowledge, a way to know thyself. Therefore, nothing here should be taken on faith. Everything here should be, must be verified by your own personal experience. I am no master, merely a good mechanic. Safety lies in no longer taking the word of others for anything. Too long we have followed blindly like sheep, like herd animals, following the leader, even when the leader leads the herd over a cliff or into war. Everything must be verified by personal experience. Otherwise, it is merely another form of slavery, one more chain to bind me in my unconscious and mechanical slavery. Verify, verify, verify everything for yourself. Free yourself of the habits of a lifetime of blind following, of not thinking for yourself. There is no better or safer path to freedom. I repeat, what we are practicing here is not a way of faith. That is a different way altogether. However, it does not mean there is not room for faith on this path. Certainly there is. In fact, what one finds as she engages this, quote, practical work on self, end quote, over a long period of time is this. If she began with faith, her faith is strengthened by understanding gained from self-observation without judgment. If she began with no faith, as I did, then she will find that she has gained faith. So you see the wonderful irony of it. This is not a faith-based path because faith is a gift of grace. It comes from the Creator to those in need of it. By our own efforts, we cannot gain faith. However, by our own efforts, we can prepare the soil to receive faith. That is one of the many rewards of the work. Here we must accept nothing on faith. We are asked to verify everything, everything for ourselves as to its merit, its truth or falsity. We do so via patient self-observation without judgment and via our personal experience. Know thyself. Socrates exhorted his disciplines to do so. Every master, including Jesus, who called it witnessing, has taught his disciplines to observe themselves. So they might come to know themselves. On the other hand, I am no master, and I say, don't do it for God's sake. They never tell us the terrible trouble it brings how we will never sleep easily again, and our unconscious, selfish, mad habits, how what is now unconscious, hidden in us, will be revealed, like opening a locked cellar door, turning a light, and what you find down there is the county asylum crawling with inmates, some wrapped in torn, filthy sheets, others naked and drooling, they're clawing and scratching to gain position on the stairs to escape and standing calmly in their midst, dressed in robes of light, is an angel around whom most of them huddle weeping, whose gentle touch upon their fevered brows calms and soothes them. This is what I am warning you about. Never mind the swarming lunatics. They are everywhere. But once you have seen the angel in your midst, the sorrow and longing will tear at you 
and trouble you all the days of your life. Red Hawk. So I find that incredibly beautiful, that just one chapter I could read over and over again. And it speaks to my soul. I uh, find that this path, this awakening, this uh, knowing thyself, it is not something for the faint of heart. It is not an easy pathway. It is a challenging uh, way to lead your life. However, um, it is also the most beautiful way to navigate this existence because your soul is in an evolutionary process just like you know, the world, the earth. We are evolving. And once you have opened up that window, that door, of awakening, uh, I think sometimes you want to close the door because as blissful and as amazing as it can be, it also shines the light on dark spots. You know, like um, Red Hawk spoke about uh, in his poem about the boy uh, taking a rock off and seeing the creepy crawlies um, and the restraint that he had to not step on them. When you are an awakened soul, you would not step on them anyway. But um, what I think the analogy here is, or what he's he's speaking about, is that um, you know we we are complex souls. We are complex beings. We've come on to this uh, plane, this earth space, this time and space, with this personality to uncover and to know thyself. It's such a deep level and uh, we shine the light on the dark spots each time we level up we shine the light and there are more lessons to learn there are more understandings to uh, obtain and the mindful way the observing way is to do that in non-judgment and uh, we're all there, my friends. We are all individually there on that path at different stages. It's all, all good. It's all okay. Everybody has a different stage. They're dealing with their different things. They're shining the light on their different aspects. They're creepy crawlies. And, um, and so as we navigate the space and expand our hearts and awaken ourselves as fully as we can each step of the way, the compassion that grows for ourselves and for everyone on the planet that are going through the same thing is uh, not something you want to shut the door on. So as painful as the path can be at times, it is also for me and for those who connect to awakening and ascending their soul to the highest level possible um, knows that there is no other way. There is no other way to navigate this existence than to be an awakened soul in the process, in the process of enlightenment. So I hope you enjoyed that chapter, you enjoyed this segment. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment. Love to hear from you. Um, tons of links below if you want to explore further. I will find a way to give you a link to the book because it is um, in a beautiful read and I will continue doing uh, different chapters from the book. And uh, have an awesome day. Please nourish yourself mindfully and give from the overflow and I will see you next time. Take care.